Well, hello, everybody. Um, it's gotten a little chilly here in the Sunshine State, but we're going to warm you up with uh, some Happy Mail and uh, kind of like a stick with me. Uh, she bought herself something, and then she's going to iron and talk. So you can work on whatever you're working on while she irons what she bought. Anyway, uh, hope you enjoy it, and we hope to get more stuff out soon. Well, hello everybody. It is Friday, January 3rd, and I have Happy Mail. Yay! This is um, from Australia. Look at that. Love the stamps. Not quite sure what, what that's about, but it's kind of cool. And it is from... Uh, says rock hole all right and let's let's check it out see what she sent all right let's see here hope you all had a good new year's jasmine was traumatized because they shoot off fireworks here so that was exciting the uh thunder shirt helps doesn't eliminate the problem all right let's see what she sent oh look at how cute okay let's see oh it's blank inside so i get to reuse it <laughs> i don't know if that was intentional but Cool. Love receiving just about anything. Just about. But thank you so much. It's a very cute card. Very, very cute. All right. Um, yesterday was Brian's birthday, and I don't have a car, so I wasn't able to go get him anything. So I think tonight the kids are taking him out to dinner for his birthday. I don't know if I'm invited. We'll see. Um, but uh, update on the hand. Feels much better. It's still a little swollen. And it still hurts if I bump it. But everything works. But yeah, it's something's definitely not quite right. But it works. So it does what it's supposed to. Which is, you know, this. This is what it's meant to do. So it's operational. Jesse got his cast off. So he is now hobbling around without the cast. And um, let's see here. I guess I can show you where I'm at on my whips real quick. Let's see. Let me do this. All right, here we go. <clears throat> okay, getting there. This was meant for Christmas, and then I thought maybe birthday, but not done yet. Getting there. But we're close. Maybe, maybe I'll crank it out this weekend. And, uh, there's Jazzy. She's going through her winter depression or something, I guess. I really think we need a second dog, but I don't know. Um, and let's see. I still haven't worked on the peacock. And I'll show you where I got so far on my other one. Not too far. Hold on. Let's go over here. And then here's the one that's for by the TV. So, not far. Okay, 
that's that's where I'm at. All right, and let's see what else is new. Um, let's see. Oh, I ordered myself something. Finally, um, I had won the Amazon gift card from uh, Becky and Becca, and I finally used it. And I've got something being shipped. I don't know how long it's going to take. I think it should. I think it said it should be here today. So maybe we'll get to open that up. More happy mail, so that you guys can see what um, what I got myself with the prize winnings from the drawing from a long, long time ago. And let's see, work has been so weird. Um, I worked. Let's see, the night. Christmas Eve was really slow. There was like 20 minutes in between calls. And then um, the day after Christmas, I think, was busy. Yesterday and today were both really, really busy, like crazy busy. And one of the one of the teammates I have, she worked New Year's Day at night. She said there was 3,000 calls waiting to be answered. Now, I'm not sure if she meant just by my team, but my team only has like 180-some people when we're fully staffed. And I'm sure they weren't fully staffed on New Year's Day evening. So I can't even imagine that, but it was crazy, crazy. So I did cut out a little early today. Um, but I think uh, I'm going to take little Missy for a walk because she's depressed. And... Maybe I shouldn't because if FedEx is coming with my, or UPS or whoever delivers, because yeah, I think, oh, well, Amazon would be the ones delivering it. Because yeah, my package should be arriving today. And I can't wait to check that out. I'm still trying to figure out what to get Brian for his birthday. <laughs> I don't know, no idea. Okay. Um, hi. Okay. Let's, uh. Let's continue with our day. Right? Okay. Okay, so I was just, just shut this off, and I have an email that it's out for delivery. Estimated arrival time between 5 and 7 p.m. That is so cool that they email you to tell you when your shit's coming so you know when you got to be home. That's really cool. Okay. So it's like, I don't know, 3.30, 4 o'clock. So I got it like an hour. Eh, I don't feel like walking the dog. My hair's wet. But anyway. All right. So it looks like we might have an unboxing coming. Okay. Okay. See you soon. All right. I don't have a lot of experience with ordering from Amazon. But no sooner did I shut off the camera and I got another email Showing me exactly where they are so that I can, like, literally stalk the delivery driver. Shows me right where he is on the map. I can, I can like, watch the guy driving to my house. Anyway. Um, it's here. Woohoo! So, we're going to open this next. I just, I have a few chores I have to do first. Um, and then we'll get set up and, and open it up. Okay. And yeah, she's still clearly depressed. This is this is actually not even the same day anymore. It's the next day, she's still sulking. Okay, uh, just a moment for you. Well, probably twenty minutes for me. Okay. All right. So it's now Sunday. 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 But let's open this up. See what I ordered for myself. Got a little grease on there. That would have been probably my family members. Alright, here's what I got. Costor DIY 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 paint by numbers. So I've seen several people doing paint by numbers on their channels. First one I saw was Rachel Ray, of course. So I thought, mm, I'm gonna have to try that. So here's what I got. All right, and let's see here. This is uh, 
Where is this made? Let me see. Um, I think it was made in Germany. I don't have my glasses on. I can't see the damn thing here. There. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Nope, China. <laughs> okay, so much for that. I guess I went with the cheaper one. They did have ones from Germany that had all like really great reviews and everything, but they were a little more expensive. And I figured for my first try, let's let's go cheap. So this is what I got. And they've got, not that you care, but some instructions on the box. And let's open it up and see. I believe I did acrylic. Because I didn't want to deal with oil. But I don't know. I don't really know. I was just excited. Okay. Comes in this little pack. <clears throat> Here's the image I chose. Let me pull it out of the plastic. Sorry. So that's the uh, the image I chose to paint by number. And canvas feels like a burlap. Fold it up. And okay, it's got paper in here, but let's let's take a look at how tiny the little areas are. Jasmine has to be right under my feet. Okay. Let's see here. So that, and then let me, let me, let me insert a finger real quick so you can see proportionately. Where, where is this? Fill me in. Oops. There. Okay. So I've got a finger in there. Yeah. My nails are crap. All right, I've inserted a finger. I've removed the finger. But you can see pretty detailed. All right. And it feels kind of uh, like a rubbery coating on the side that you paint on. And burlapy on the back side. And look. They've got a paper chart, too, for you, so that once you paint over your numbers and you realize I screwed up. But anyway, this, you could make, like, copies of this and, like, use a projector and put it up on your wall and paint the whole painting on your wall. Wouldn't that be fun? That's an idea. I don't have a projector. But, yeah. Or you could turn it into a punch needle. It was really, really big, like, you know, wall-sized needle point cross. It just could be converted to just about anything. Okay. So there we go. Now, it's all wrinkled, right? So you iron it, apparently. Oh, God, that shit is right between my legs. Okay, I'm going to show you. It's ridiculous. See, I got nowhere to go. Those are my new slippers for Christmas. All right. Oh, look, Wendy's having a manic mode. Okay. Anyway, let's let's check out these instructions a little bit more. Really, Jasmine? Right there. Okay. Oh, I love the translations. Okay, let's read this together. Dear friends, no matter how did you get this paint by numbers, when you open it and try to finish it, you have already become a new artist. And no matter what you, no matter what do you popular in USA, Europe, Japan, and Korea, it combines many functions. I'm shaky. I need to stabilize myself. Um, 
It combines many functions in one. If can be a present for others. Oh, it can be a present for others. You let your live entertainment and your home decoration. Also, you can learn how to draw by painting it. Paint by numbers is the perfect first step for the beginners to enjoy the painting artwork. It offers all the basic painting skills, a sense of accomplishment, and amusement. You can share the fun of painting with your family, lover, and friends. It will be your own masterpiece for collection. Okay, I need to turn this because I can't straddle the dog anymore. Okay. All right. I'm all winded from opening something. Talk about out of shape. Okay, here's the instructions. Step one. Clean an area to work in. Cover the area with old newspaper or newsprint. Keep is clean. Also, you can prepare a bottle of water for brush washing by yourself. Step two. <laughs> Fill in the areas that marked with numbers with the corresponding color. Quit whining. You don't have an opposable thumb. You can't paint. Well, I guess you could use your mouth. Okay. Step three. Rather paint on color at a time from the largest areas of this color to smallest, working from the top of the painting down. That confuses the shit out of me. I don't know. Are they saying work from top down? But then in the picture, it shows something else. Okay. Step four. By starting with the larger ones, you'll be more practiced using the time you get to the smallest areas, which can be quite fiddly to paint. Okay. Step five. Having the brush control to paint accurately up to an edge or specific point. Okay. Step six. Display your end masterpiece. If you like how you're painting, frame your creation or mat it. And hang it on your wall. Okay. The warnings are the best, usually. Let's see. Warning. The pigment is rapid drying. Make sure the lid is off when you don't use doot. When you doot, use it. <laughs> the pigment is spreadability. You can modify it when you make a mistake. Number three. When you don't use the paintbrush, please remember to wash it clearly. Number four, due to the printing reason, there may be some discrepancy of the colors between the reference picture and the products. Stop whining. Hold on. Okay, Jasmine, sit really. Okay, come on. Come sit next to me. Get right up in there. Come on. Come on. There we go. Okay. Um, number five, if you are an experienced painter, you can paint your artwork creatively. If you're not experienced, you must follow directions. Okay. Number six, we have many various kinds of design to meet your need. There are decoration painting, oil painting, artistic illustration, and so on. Also, you can found the famous painting, modern works, and other original works in our products. Suitable for all ages. All ages, except not suitable for children under three years of age. So all ages, but not really so much. Okay. The paints are not edible. Stop eating the paint. Okay. Oops. Wrong way. Ah. Okay. Here, you can scare it, scan it with your transparency app. Okay. Oh, it's oil. I wanted acrylic. Oh, well.
paint by number is an enjoyable live entertainment. With practice, you can create beautiful art. So expect in the beginning, it will look like shit. Okay. Here are some pointers to assist with much improved end result. Okay, sorry for the shakies, I'm an old lady. To make them more pastel, if you want to moderate the border between two different colors, you can try your painting brush. You can dry your painting brush and then dip it into the pigment. Just a little is okay. Then paint the broken line carefully to make it more pastel. Okay, thank you. To make the colors transparent, dilute the pigment and then paint on the canvas lightly. You will found it look see-through. See thought. It looks see thought. I like see thought. Okay. <clears throat> Stippling decoration. Paint it by dots and flicks. Small, short touches. That all together. I like how they put that all together, all together. Produce an even or softly graded shadow. Dip your paintbrush into the pigment and then. Dot quickly and lightly. Please pay close attention to shape, size, and density in order to make a perfect side effects. How to get creases out. Just use iron to get creases out before painting, damn it. Just use an iron. Okay. To make the border pin it shape. If you want to make the border, I don't know, pinnate, you can paint it quickly and lightly. Add details. After finished your artwork, after finished your artwork, you can add the details. Oh God, I'm so shaky. After finished your artwork, you can add the details in it to make it more beautiful with your creative. And then here, look, before and after. So I can add more stuff to it when I'm done. Okay. So, does this look like fun, guys? I think so. So it's the iCooster. Unleash your inner creativity while having fun. Okay, I am so excited. Okay, I want to try this. I want to try it. I want to try it. And it looks like it's got 24 colors. I meant to get acrylic. I got oil. It sucks. Oh, well. And once again, here's my photo. So, I think we need to get going on this. Let's, let's iron it. Okay. We're going we're gonna to do like a, a video. <laughs> Imagine that. Of me ironing. Have you ever seen that? Imagine if Brian walked in the door and saw me ironing. What's up? Okay. Yeah, well, when Brian and I first met, in the very beginning, I lived with him. And by lived with, I mean I just went to his house and never went home except to get new clothes. But he would wash my clothes and iron them everything including like underwear and then have it all hanging on the door when I woke up for me to get dressed for the walk of shame back home to go change my clothes but I was in clean ironed clothes on my walk of shame to go home now I don't know if any of you knew this already I probably told you but yeah Brian and I started basically living together like three days after we knew each other I think our first date was on a Saturday and then, like, on Tuesday, I spent the night and never went home again. So, yeah. And the whole time we've been together, we've slept in different places, like, all that Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And then he went bear hunting for a few days. And then he came to Florida once or twice. Probably less than 10 days total that we haven't slept in the same place. Isn't that crazy? Okay. Anyway. Um, all right. I'm going to go set up the ironing board and everything. And I might put on a bra too. That'd probably be a good idea. Yeah. Okay. That'll be on the list too. 
Okay, see you soon. All right, let's give this a try. It's very cramped in here. The kids are watching TV in the living room, so I didn't want to disturb them by recording a video, so I dragged it all into my craft room, which is pretty cramped to begin with. So, it's, yeah. Space limitations. All right. Now, I kept saying burlap. It's not really burlap. It's kind of like, um... I don't really know how to, uh, let me see if I can get that to focus in on that. Come on. Focus. Let's see, put my finger there so it'll recognize it. Come on. Focus, focus. Come on. There we go. Okay. So it's not really burlap. It's, um... I guess almost like a linen, but with the plastic coating on the other side, kind of like a outdoor tablecloth. I guess that's the best way to describe it. Burlap is much more rough, but anyway. Um, with this plastic coating on here, I don't think, you know, you want to be putting your iron on the rubberized rubber. It's like a rubber sheet. There you go. Those lap pads, the crib, crib sh those crib things you put in for the baby crib underneath them yeah those it's kind of like that um but yeah you don't want to be putting your hot iron on the rubber side so i'm sure you want to put the cloth side up now my spray bottle of water went missing years ago when iron when iron when brian took over the ironing so i'm thinking i don't have that he uses steam all the time but i just have a, a white dishcloth from the kitchen, kind of buffer the heat a little, and <clears throat> let's see if we can melt the shit out of this thing. Okay, I don't need that focus. Okay, here we go. Let's take off the glasses for a second. Yeah. And just kind of slowly check it and make sure I'm not damaging it before I go all crazy on it. I can hear the steam kicking in. Okay. Let's see if this is working at all. Yeah, it's working. Okay. So while I'm doing this, um, last night, in my world of time travel, is when I posted the video of my uh, walk down memory lane. And I really didn't know if anybody was going to give two shits about seeing, you know, my family memorabilia and keepsakes and stories of my grandparents and their young love and all that. But surprisingly, a lot of you were like, yes. Okay, so I haven't melted it. We're good. We're doing good. All right. Um, so, yeah, I was kind of surprised. I find that stuff fascinating and I find the older I get the more interesting I find personal histories um, intriguing and interesting like even you know just hearing from you guys and your life stories and um, you're happy and sad and celebratory and trying moments of life. I find it all very, very interesting. I love hearing about you guys and your lives. Um, so, yeah, I guess I shouldn't have been quite so surprised, but yeah, great uh, response that people want to hear more. So that made me very happy. Um, because, you know, I tend to be a sentimental person, uh, or as Brian says, hoarder. Okay. I don't deny it. I hang on to all that stuff. And clearly, you know, it's inherited from genetics. Because my grandfather, clearly, by looking through the contents of his wallet, he hung on to lots of stuff. And, uh, yeah, I, I have, uh, I've had to get rid of, like, 90% of my stuff when we moved to Florida. Because we just didn't have room for it all. At least we didn't think we were going to have enough room. 
you know, coming to Florida from the Midwest, up there you've got attics and basements, and in Florida you don't have basements because it's all swamp, and, you know, you don't tend to have attics either, and we didn't have any idea how much storage we would have because we didn't know what kind of house we were getting at the time that we had an estate sale and sold all of our furniture and most of our belongings. I only was able to keep a few sentimental items. Um, and that was really difficult uh, to get rid of stuff. I've watched a few episodes of like hoarders when you see them like purging their home of all this stuff. Now I wasn't like shovels of garbage kind of hoarding. It was sentimental things, which I'm sure they think their garbage is sentimental too. But um, yeah, so I got rid of so much stuff that it breaks my heart that I don't have it anymore. Um, but uh, clearly I, the things that my ancestors thought were important enough to hang on to, I've hung on to as well. I have that stuff from my grandfather, and I've got some stuff from my his wife, my grandmother, mom's mom, from when she passed away, from her keepsakes and memorabilia. And then when my mother died, you know, I had all of her um, boxes full of keepsakes that I hung on to, didn't get rid of. So that kind of stuff I would not part with. I wanted to go through it and see what was so important to these people that they kept it for all those years. The things that I got rid of were my sentimental items. Um, you know, I, I had like my corsages from all the dances in high school and the, I probably still have some of that stuff, but I had like a box full of every note I'd ever passed in class and all of my um, things from school, artwork projects and every paper I'd ever written. I had like everything. So all the artwork from the kids, I think I kept all of that, especially since I don't have custody of my kids. That was important for me to hang on to. Um, I wanted to hang on to all their toys and everything because of not only sentimental, but my, my twins were really into Legos. And I don't know if any of you guys have played with Legos in the last decade, but that's awesome. So I liked playing with the Legos and actually kind of almost took over to the point the kids were getting upset because I was doing them all the time. And, you know, they wanted to do them or they'd get bored and I'd take over. But, yeah, we had some of those really elaborate sets like the Harry Potter castles and all that. I loved it. I didn't like getting rid of all the Legos. But that that's some of the stuff that I ended up having to get rid of. And... Um, my mom had, she was an avid reader, so she had a whole, she had an actual library in her house, and I got rid of all of her books, because I knew I didn't have room, and they're so heavy to move. Um, I pulled out the ones that were authors that I liked, but everything else I got rid of. Um, she was really into... The royal family and all that and jean platy and but she had hundreds and hundreds of books so got rid of all of that i i wish i hadn't gotten rid of her coin collection because a lot of that stuff you know having an estate sale i have no idea how much money we actually got for any of that versus what it was actually worth <clears throat> and given my um my emotional state at the time because my mother had just passed away within a few months of that estate sale, uh, I basically was kept away from the whole estate sale, figuring it was going to create a huge ordeal and traumatic for me and holding them up with me wanting to dig through everything. So lots and lots of th things were sold that I, I'm, you know, not actively bitter about, but I still regret having gotten rid of it. Especially when we ended up 
moving into a big house and we had lots of storage space. We had empty cupboards and stuff and plenty of storage. So that got held against a certain person quite bitterly when we first moved. And look at all the space we have. I could have kept all that stuff. But again, hindsight's twenty twenty. If I, you know, now that we're in an apartment, I would have had to get rid of it all here, and that would have been a nightmare we're dealing with trying to, you know, get rid of the house and downsize as we did with selling a lot of our own furniture and trying to have an estate sale with all the financial issues. Ah, it would have been a nightmare. So it all it all ended up being for the best. But you know, her coin collection, uh, she and I both collected Department Fifty Six villages. She had Dickens and the um, uh, uh, what is it? New England, and I collected Christmas in the City in the North Pole, and we had hundreds of buildings. Um, I was collecting it when I was young, before kids, and you know had a disposable income, and it was at the height of the popularity when they were having all the shows with people selling um like uh limited edition pieces and everything prices were at the top and i a couple of those buildings i spent like i know one of them i spent a thousand dollars on and another one like 950 they were like limited edition pieces and I sold all that shit in a estate sale and you know the bottom fell out of that whole thing so nothing was worth even what the original retail price was anymore you know figuring you if you bought it out of a store buildings were like 35 to 60 dollars maybe a hundred for a big one and I was so upset that all that shit was being sold for below what retail was when I originally purchased it much less spending several thousand dollars on all of that just to have it all gone in a day well actually a weekend so yeah i was kept away from that because he knew i would just keep grabbing stuff out and i did still do that because whenever he'd take like boxes of stuff packed up i'd start digging through them grabbing oh just this just that just this it doesn't take up much room yeah anyway i don't know where i was going with that but yeah so the fact that yeah now i figured out i'm back on track i figured out where i was <clears throat> Now that I found out that you guys are actually interested in hearing more, I have not taken the time to go through that stuff very much. Um, part of it being the emotional struggle of my mom passing away and that affected me a lot um, for a very long time. Um, and, you know, just kind of staying away from that stuff because I didn't want it triggering me, <clears throat> but I'm ready now to start looking through that stuff. I don't get all upset and jacked up about it. Um, and then like the same thing with the kids when I gave up custody of them, I purged the house of everything within sight of them you know all the pictures of them were taken down put away the room was shut you know gave away their furniture all that stuff um and now i can look at their pictures and stuff without going into a crying jag so it's been <laughs> you know it's been what <clears throat> oh gosh eight years i think since I've seen them or something like that, eight years. I think I kept saying nine years, but they were at my wedding to Brian, and Brian and I have been married eight years, so it must have been, um, I think, I think it was the year we got married that we gave up, that I gave up custody, because the following year we took his kids to Disney World, and he and I went there on our honeymoon to Disney, and then the following year we took Brian's kids, and it was really tough because that was something that I used to do with my boys, take them to Disney World, and it was kind of meant to help cheer me up a bit, but 
Yeah, so I think it's been eight years since I've seen my kids. Anyway, rambling. <clears throat> uh, I'm at the point now where I can safely reminisce about them without losing my shit. So I just keep looking to the future. They are... They are... Uh, oh, gosh. This last year they would have turned 17. So this coming summer they'll be 18 years old. So that's kind of cool. Six more months, they'll be 18. And then I will feel like I am safe then to uh, reach out and contact them. I just don't want, uh, don't want to stir the pot until they're adults. So yeah, I've got less than a year and I'll feel like I can go ahead and reach out to them. I'm kind of really curious to find out what they think of me, what they were told happened, because they were young. Um, you know, they were nine years old last time I saw them. Um, nine? Yeah, nine. Yeah, yeah, they were nine. Um, and, you know, you know if things were so bad between myself and the other parent that I was to the point where I felt I had to give up custody for my own sanity, that there was probably some mental stuff going on. So it would be curious to know what they have been told and what they think, because even at that time, I know that they had been, I'm trying to be as gentle as possible in the way I word this, to, they had been persuaded that certain things had gone certain ways that weren't necessarily accurate. So, yeah. Anyway, gosh, ramble, ramble. This is what happens when I iron. Okay, I've almost got those creases out. Let's see how it looks from the front. They're almost out. I want to make sure that they're completely out because if it actually turns out nice, I don't want to see a crease. So we're going to keep going. So, yeah. The short, short version of what I just said for the last 17 minutes is, hey, you guys want to see more? Cool. Let's do it. I'm ready. Okay. <clears throat> I might try and take some notes too because, you know, um, Kat from Spasmodic Arts had sent me that gorgeous uh, family tree to fill out. And, you know, just going through Grandpa's wallet, there was all kinds of information in there. I should start like, taking notes on that. And I do have the family Bible with. A lot of the family tree filled out that my mom did so yeah cool <clears throat> come on alrighty gotta be getting close now yeah it's getting there okay that side looks pretty good now. I think because it's just taken so damn long, I'm going to get all crazy and brave. And I'm just going to forget the towel. Go for it here. Keep it moving. Other, addressing other comments from last night's video, uh, Machine of Death. Yeah, there's a, there's a select few of you who are enjoying that. I have another one recorded, but it was really, really um, uh, kind of 
the most disturbing yet and I didn't want to put that one out during the holidays so I just need to edit that audio and have some sort of video to put it on top of but there is one that's already recorded so that should be coming fairly soon those just take a really long time to edit um, because the audio, you know, I mispronounce or somebody walks in on the closet while I'm recording and I got to take that out or whatever. I have to Google how to pronounce some words. So I got to get that edited, but those take a long time to, to put together. Um, and let's see here. Uh, what else? What other comments have I had recently? Well, I think that's it. That I can think of offhand. Almost done. I suppose you know when you actually frame it if you use um, uh, what are they called I can't think of the name of them those boards and then you wrap it around with a staple gun and you pull the little bit of wrinkle out but mm, I just need to get it out completely that's just me sorry There we go. That's good. It's a, it's a doofer. Okay. It'll do for now. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay. Thanks for thanks for bearing with me. 22 minutes. 23 minutes to iron that. Okay. Enough. Okay. Um, I think that, you know, to actually start painting, probably a new video. Because this is really so long already. Okay, um, can't wait to start. It's exciting. Okay, see you later, guys. I, I almost forgot to show you. So it comes with uh, three paintbrushes. One kind of broad and two very fine tip paintbrushes. So, and that's, you know, stick my finger in there so you can see three paintbrushes, but I have lots of paintbrushes. So anyway, all right. Uh, that's it. Okay. Okay. I forgot something else again. As I said, I got this off of Amazon. I will put a link to this painting in the description of the video. And, um, you know, of course, if you purchase through my link, I do get a, a little commission. So, Happy New Year, everybody. I, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, so she was a little manic, wasn't she? She's just so excited. Um, because she's got a new project. She's, she's good at starting, not so good at finishing. Needs to get, get a little organized here. Got so many irons in the fire. Irons. Uh, oh my goodness. Okay. Um, if you have anything to say, please say it in the comments. Just don't be rude. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know. Uh, Happy New Year. Okay. Bye.